Hi there everyone, it's Friday night after midnight. I'm on a swivel chair, which leads to a very arty shot here. Uh, yes, you know, cinematography is obviously a passion of mine, as you can see by the fact that I have no lenses or anything. Uh, but I do have a glass of wine, which uh, is my equivalent of the Bow Beats coffee. Um, so uh, yeah, let's have a glass of wine and let's, let's talk about Drumbo 2.0 or 2.0, one of the two, or maybe both. And let's, uh, let's talk about clip launching, which I promised, I promised it to you and I will deliver. I will fucking do. I will deliver. Okay, let's talk about Drumro's clip mode. Just uh, just before that, I strongly doubt that Loop Pop has ever recorded a tutorial from a Sainsbury's car park in Exeter. But that's what I'm doing here. Uh, sat in the front seat of my car. I've got Drumro in front of me. I've got. Um, like an iPad, iPad case, an iPad key, keyboard case, which the keyboard's no longer working on the keyboard case, by the way. I've had two of these now for the iPad Pro 2017 10.5 inch, and both of them have broken and out of warranty. It apparently cost me £120 to fix. Just like, no, I mean, come on, I, I don't hit keys that hard. Um, it's a disgrace. Anyway. Uh, where was I? Yes, something about tutorials recording in super car parks. Uh, oh, my setup. Yes, yes, yes. So I have a have a mouse on the keyboard case on the other side of the keyboard case, which is how I can move it around now, like this. But it's not, you know, it's not exactly as smooth. This is kind of I've got my iPad on my left leg. I've got this keyboard case plus mouse on my right leg. I'm talking into a headset mic. I must look like, like a right idiot to anyone with their shopping, but you know, there we go. It's it's only Exeter. I'm uh, collecting my son this evening, my nine-year-old son, and he is um, he's at a school disco. Yeah, so I have to wait till eight, eight o'clock. So I'm in this car park, and while I'm in this car park, <laughs> let's just do some drumbo clip mode. Uh, right, so I've opened a project here. As you can see, um, there are a bunch of clips here. Th this is the new clip mode. I will try not to just uh, fool about with uh, my fingers as I did then. I keep forgetting because I don't use a mouse usually because it's an iPad. I touch the iPad, you know. So there we go. But uh, yeah, you can um, you can enlarge the clip mode by dragging on the keyboard so if you're not wanting to use the keyboard at all or if uh, if you have a MIDI keyboard connected then you can get rid of it completely alternatively uh, you can press the up arrow here and the clip view will move up to fill the screen which is pretty cool it allows you to see more rows of clips I've been trying to get Giku to uh, investigate whether we could have a view here that would that would kind of you could kind of scroll up scroll the clip view up and then kind of scroll the module view in proportion and still be able to use the knobs um not sure if that will happen he said he'd look into it i would see i'm i'm greedy i would really love to have a playable keyboard and a few rows of clips here and be able to use the module views as well just want everything i want it all as Freddie Mercury said once um, in a song. Uh, you can't remember the name. Anyway, yes, let, let's go. So, clip mode. What can you do in clip mode? Well, it's, uh, it's a, such a massive enhancement to the previous song mode. If you remember, you used to have patterns listed up in the top here. You used to be able to choose between them, create new ones, etc. But you had to play all of a pattern all at once, and uh, you couldn't see the individual clips and now now we can and this mode you can either you can either act as a kind of a very kind of li li linear song mode where you create a song and you just play through the patterns and then that's it or you can you can loop 
the patterns for as long as you want and kind of mix and match clips. You can select clips and play them, uh, play them willy nilly as you wish. So let's uh, let's go through a few things regarding the clip mode. First of all, what I'll do is I'll just um, we'd loop off the the patterns will just play straight through. So I have a few set up here. So let's just hit play and see what happens. I'll turn the volume slightly lower than usual just because I uh, want to be able to talk over it. Um, so as you can see, we've moved on to the next pattern and this is quite a long one. Uh, so it'll just keep on playing until the end and then it'll move to that one, then move to that one, that's move to that one. What you can do is you can hold, hold on a pattern uh, that will bring up a menu. You can set the number of repeats, various other things. Uh, one very useful piece of organization here, which I haven't yet done with this particular track, is uh, you can change the name. So you can change it to intro, verse, chorus, etc. to kind of organize your song a bit coolly. So that's good. You can insert new rows, duplicate rows, copy, paste, remove, all sorts of controls, which is really nice. Um, See, it's just happily playing away like this, and it will carry on like that. Uh, so that's enough of that for now. So let's explore a few of these controls. Uh, I can loop, loop a pattern. Let's let's loop a short, shortish pattern, and we'll see what happens. Okay, here we go. Pattern's playing. And it'll just carry on and carry on and carry on. Now, if I wanted to, I could uh, change any of the clips out for another one. So I could click that one, and it would uh, play that clip from that particular track. But it'll keep all the other ones as they were before. Or I can, you know, you can mix and match as many clips as you want here until it might do an almighty cacophony. Because I've got no idea what key a few of these are in. Um, and, and then if you just want to play the whole pattern again, as, as kind of like an Ableton scene really, then you just click on it like that again and it, um, and it will always conform to um, the timing of the main track here. Uh, now, this is kind of the one thing that I'm not always sure about in terms of um, where, when you begin a pattern, how far through it will begin. It's all tied up, it seems to be tied up with something to do with the longest clip, something to do with the main track, uh, and I just haven't, haven't entirely worked that out yet because uh, I wanted to be amazing at this tutorial. I wanted to show myself as someone who can, still has a lot to learn, you know, because if I come across as too much of an expert like a lot of those other YouTubers, you know, that's just, just not me. I'm unlike Loop Pop. I am a man of the people. Uh, so th there we go. Um, other things in clip mode. If you uh, turn on the clock icon here, then um, if you switch a clip, it will switch in time with the pattern. So here I will uh, activate this clip here, and it'll only activate when this clip here has ended. So let's see. There we go, and it's full flashing till then. And there we go, it's now playing. You can't really hear it, because it's kind of a, it's just a kick track being played very quietly. So that uh, went really well. Let, let's try it with this one instead here. We'll do this. Uh, click it now. There we go. And it's not in tune at all, is it? Look at that. But well, at least you saw how it, how it works. Um, let's have a look at this hamburger menu here. Apparently that is the correct name for it, hamburger menu. Uh, I can't remember if I mentioned that on the last tutorial or not. But uh, here we have a few options. Uh, now, yes, I, I was playing, I quite like this mode here. This is not the default. It means you have to tap to stop the clip. So if I uh, play these, I can stop these clips and at the moment that they will stop at the end but I can um, turn off the clock here and they will stop instantly and there we go and it's even though the transport continues to play there isn't anything actually happening I can reactivate things like that. 
However, um, the default mode for this, which will be quite hard to show you with the mouse because of the whole swiping with the mouse problem, is swipe it down to stop the clip. So let's have a look at this, shall we? Um, if I press play here, and I, I will mute this clip in, I will not mute, I'll stop this clip in track four. Let's have a look at this. There we go. Track three, track two, track one. There we go. So that is all. That has all worked, but I, you know, I prefer to tap instead. There are also a couple of options for editing clip. Uh, I like to do double tap for that. Uh, and what, what that means is the it's whichever clip will appear in the sequencer here for you to edit further. Um, so if I press play, well, uh, I'll press play on the scene. Then I'll try to edit this clip here. So let's play the scene. And this is playing now. If we if we tapped on that clip, it would switch to it. Let's go back to this clip and then double tap, and then it will appear to be edited. Otherwise, I'm playing. I'm switching between clips, but I'm not actually seeing it to edit. So that is uh, that is it. This is all so easy without a mouse, really. Um, play on that again to stop the transport. The the other um, the other options. Ed editors follow song. What if you turn this on? What happens is this cl this uh, center clip so what appears in in the sequencer to be edited it'll move along with the song so um, if I hit play here if I then be began this pattern instead the editor should move to that clip let's have a look shall we there we go so that can be quite useful um, if you're kind of a bit lost about uh, what what you're editing then uh, if you do editors follow song it'll always be the clip that's playing so that's quite useful uh, you can the start from first pattern control um, it governs uh, where the song will start if you if you have if you have loop off and you hit play then um, if you have start from first pattern on it will always start from the first pattern again Where, whereas if you have this off it will start from wherever Whichever scene you kind of have highlighted that particular time. So there we go. Uh, so depends on what you want to do really. Uh, next, these two arrows here. Just scroll, scroll between things. Okay. Um, let's investigate some options. Uh, if I scroll to the end here, we have these two pluses. We got one as a plus. We got one plus with something behind it. Now, uh, the first plus just creates a blank row, so a new blank scene for you. Uh, the one on the right here is pretty cool. If you select a few clips, let's just select these four clips. Have I got anything else highlighted? Yeah, I have actually. Let's uh, let's deselect those ones. It will produce a duplicate row but it will duplicate whatever clips you have highlighted and playing at that particular moment so if I uh, if I hit plus now this right hand plus it will create a row that's only fill up of those four clips and that is really cool you know because it enables you to quickly create kind of song variations and things uh, so it kind of acts with your mute acts with your mutes in effect as well, uh, I think. Sure, should, should, should we try muting a track and see see what happens? So, let's let's have all these highlighted again. But this time, let's mute. Uh, if you hit M, you you can mute tracks. There's a, there's a an, another way to mute tracks as well, which is to uh, you'll have to forgive me here cause, because I'm gonna swipe a swipe a down on this track, and then I'm gonna swipe a down on four. I'm gonna swipe. A, down on seven you can see that mutes if you swipe up again it'll unmute if you swipe up it will solo oh if you swipe you swipe up when mute isn't on it will solo and in fact i'm pretty sure 
there's no need to have this this yeah there's no need to have this mute control on when you swipe uh if you have the m control on then if then if you tap the tracks i'm sorry then um you, you mute them uh, see there are, in drumbo what is very cool there's usually two or three ways to do the same thing uh which is very very cool because you can just kind of pick the one that fits your, fits your workflow the most um what i was going to do was uh yeah mute this track here and then see whether this clip here even though i have it highlighted whether it will duplicate that if i if i hit this let's just have a look i'm really not sure i haven't tried this uh let, let's see if it respects the overall track mute or whether it will still uh, paste this clip and look it respected the track mute so that is really cool so there are essentially two ways to avoid having having a clip in a row kind of duplicate um is to either deselect it completely or you can mute the track and that will also have the same effect and presumably uh, if i solo the track i will just uh i let's highlight all these clips again let's solo this track here track four Ooh, track four and remember swipe up to solo then if i hit the plus here what should happen is it'll only duplicate that clip even though we've got track tracks one two and seven selected let's see if this works it does look at that you see tutorializing and learning myself at the same time this is this is really awesome really that's an awesome piece of functionality well done geek indeed that's fantastic okay so uh that's duplicating and everything uh but there's another very cool feature which is you can drag and drop clips um into empty cells so uh, if i hold this one here and just drag it it begin to drag this plus appears and i can just drop the clip directly onto there you could also dro drop the clip directly onto another track um, and it would uh, preserve the se sequence of data and uh, just apply it to whatever instrument you had on that or samples or whatever that you have on that track so that's cool uh, you can undo that move i can't remember how, how many undos there are now uh used to be one looks like it's still one um yeah Hope, hopefully we'll have a hopefully the undo memory will increase uh eventually i know that giku has been working on undo recently so i realized after recording uh my clip video that uh, i hadn't kind of provided the link between the auto grow record video and this one which is that uh you want to do a song then you need to create clips to do so and in order to do that then you need to record clips so um let's just quickly um insert a new row here and show you kind of just a very basic workflow which is that uh, you know you have you have your clips from a particular for a particular row, and then um, selecting track one here, I then double tap on that, and then I'm in a new clip. And then I can record this new clip, and what I probably want to do is uh, j just kind of have a just have a, a kick drum. I'll just mute everything else apart from the the kick drum and the track that I'm on. And then um, I will figure out what I want to record. Let's uh, just have this uh, scrolled up so I can see actually see the clip. And what you'll see is the the note data being recorded into here, and you'll also see it here as well, which is nice. Um, so yeah, let's uh... okay. Let's uh, let's do this. Okay, so I did one note wrong in there, but that's all right because um, in the next video, what I'll do is I'll teach you about the piano roll and uh, how to correct bad playing, which obviously, you know, I'm not a pianist, so um, bad playing happens quite a lot. Uh, but, but yeah, that that's how to um, that's how to auto grow record into into a clip. 
um so yeah hope uh hope that was useful and uh now this seamless edit will seamlessly fade into the rest of the clip video um so what else is there to talk about clip mode oh one one exciting thing about clip mode clip locks so uh you, you know parameter locks are where you you have um you have a note in a sequence. Let's uh, just uh, solo this sequence here. And we're on this clip, so let's, uh, let's make sure we're actually affecting it. Now, parameter locks are, you select a note, so I'm selecting this F here, and th then you can increase the value or Increase the value, and it will re re it will essentially re remember that value for that one step alone, which is an amazing feature. It was first in the Electron devices uh, like the Octrack, the the Rhythm, etc., and uh, it really enables you to kind of vary your sequences hugely, um, which is very very cool. Uh, but now let, let's undo that. Let's see if it undo undo will work with that. Undo will not work with that. Oh dear. Oh dear. That's fine though. That's fine. I'll, I'll just, uh, if you hold hold the step. And let me t -t tap the step. Uh, yeah, if you hold it with your finger, this menu appears. I couldn't make it appear with the mouse. Um, there's an option. If you hit the right arrow, you can select clear P lock, and that will clear the parameter lock, which is nice. Uh, so that means that my my filter has now returned to how it was before for this particular note. But what you can do is now a clip lock. So if you if you hold if you hold the clip, I'll, I'll have to hold it with with my finger, and then uh, I'll move some move some values, uh, do some reverb, let's do some feedback, let's really play around with some things. There we go. Um, so these are values that I've selected. Uh, if you hold the clip, you can see what they are again. But that is only for that one clip. So now I can, uh, if I return to another clip, it's the the default values that I already had there. If I select this clip again, then it will return to these mad values that I have. So again. Again, what you can do is just set up some uh, some song variations, just some clip variations. So that is very, very cool indeed. Um, what else is there to talk about with the clip launcher? One uh, one cool trick I got shown was um, if you if we look at the master track here, uh, if we create a blank row. If we create, you see, I have this. This is the secret source of um, of a very very cheap iOS mix. Okay, to improve your mix on iOS, this is a secret that people on the who are on the audio audio bus forum, a lot of us know on there. There is a, there's a preset in this app called Bark Filter called uh, I've created. A, a variant of it but it's called triple band and it's kind of a secret source thing I've, I've no idea exactly how it affects everything it just makes everything sound a lot fuller it kind of sorts out the mids really well and just kind of just makes everything sound more more rounded without having to kind of do any any eq to anything at all it's really good um uh so that's just a extra little tip for you there um but what I was planning to do was uh, I will just uh, put on some mad effect here, like a, a waveguide, for example. Uh, now, if if I play this normally, see it's already it's affecting everything. But then what I can do is I can I can mute this. If I hit M, if I hit the mute, and I do the header, then I can mute that. But then I can do a, I can do a clip lock. Uh, pick that normal clip over there first. So on the master track, 
I have an empty cell here and I can do a clip lock so I will hold it with my finger and then actually let's uh, let's make sure this is working I will hold this and I will unmute on the clip so it's so what I have I, I have this one I have this one clip here which, which has this uh, which has this mad waveguide effect which is just a master effect and so if, if you want if just want to have one scene, one one little clip where things are, things are kind of mad, and you can have a series of them set up. You could set up a series of effects along along here, and you could you could mute them and then unmute them in the clip lock, or you could do the same for like send effects. You could have a you could have a scene. Um, you could have a clip where where the send effects completely unmuted, or you could have a or you could have it so that. Um, on one particular clip you're sending loads you're sending it fully to to particular effects on the sands you know there there are a number of kind of variations of this uh, but yeah it's just about song variations again so it kind of a, if you're having a live jam then clip mode is really cool clip mode is also just cool if you just want to uh, arrange a linear song name your headings and uh, yeah just go from there um um, you'll come up with your your own workflow for this. You'll you'll kind of decide if you want to do jams more, you want to do linear arrangements more, or you might decide to mix and match the two. Um, but it's it's a, a lot of fun. The clip launcher really is very well thought out, and um, it's great stuff. I can't remember if I've left anything out of this. Uh, I may have. If so, um, hit me up in the comments and um, ask ask me some things. Uh, but yeah, I will do another Drambo video very soon about uh, the piano roll and the automation editor. Uh, but until then, thank you very much for watching and listening. And I now need to uh, leave the car before more people look at me weirdly. Uh, see you again everyone, goodbye.